Unscripted. Unshackled. Uncouth. What you're about to hear is for mature ears only. It's Miguel Fuller. I would show anything. I'd show my hee hee and my hoo hoo oh. and my ha ha. <laughs> Holly O'Connor. Hey, Daddy, you want to take this to the bedroom? <laughs> and Scotty the Body. I am officially not only the grill daddy, but I'm a hot grill daddy. Oh, wow. It's the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast. Only from Hot 101.5, Tampa Bay's new hip music. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Hi, girl. We are engulfed in all things right now. Uh, big game. Yes. Oh, yeah. Exciting and uh, nerve wracking as we've done now what two podcasts about it. Yeah. About sports, which is so insane. Rare. I mean, obviously, it took having the game in Tampa to, for that to happen. Yeah. But it's been really cool to see. Um, so uh, this weekend, um, I want to try to like at least drive through Tampa you and should. just sort of like see what's there. Yeah. Because I have a feeling I won't be able to like get to anything. Yeah. Next week, I don't think you'll be able to get anywhere if you don't have tickets yeah i had an appointment yesterday in tampa um which is gonna dive tell into how i wanted to start the podcast about today oh but um i had an appointment with medi weight loss where i'm uh, close to 30 pounds down start medi.com slash 1015 <laughs> um but i was over there for my weigh-in and i had to drop something off at a friend's house and so i was like in this uh like del mabry kennedy area for some reason, they're doing something with the sewers or construction. But I was like, this ain't the time. Maybe it's necessary for the next weekend. M- maybe. Maybe we can't handle all the people without that. All the raw poop that's going to be flowing uh, through our lot sewers. Of I hate poo. that word. Uh, a lot of poop. Uh, Wait, you hate the word poop, but then about once a show in the morning, you'll announce that you got to go dookie. And to me... Because <laughs> you hear how funny that is? That sounds <laughs> gross to me. Like, when you say poop, I'm like, oh, they're going to go to the bathroom no, and do whatever. No, that's disgusting. Oh, no, I've when you say dookie, like, I'm like... Uh, uh, it's uh, so funny to say. It's fun to say. I don't like that word. Like, I, I never... Because whenever we've done... You know, every morning show in forever time has always done the topic of like, what word grosses you out? And oh, yeah. usually it's like moisture or panties or and ointment. Ointment and people call in. Oh, ointment? My God. Ointment. That's yeah. a, a big thing. Okay. People I think don't it's like why that. they don't like moist. It's that oi. Mm-hmm. Ointment. Ointment. Oi. Moist. Oi. I hate the word dookie. And like, <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Is it dookie or is it dookie? As dookie. dookie. Okay. D O O. Have that's you why, heard it? Dookie? dookie? Not ducky. That's, a, that's wait, an animal. I said dookie. Ducky. Wait, what? You said dookie. You said do. No. But, like, <laughs> yes, like, it's not that. Oh my God. Cookie. <laughs> okay, cookie. 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 Dookie. Ducky. Ducky. Okay, and the reason is. I say this is because that I have never <laughs> once said that word in my entire life because in seventh grade, Green Day came out with one of the greatest albums of yeah. all time from a rock band, and I loved it. And I was so afraid of mispronouncing it and getting made fun of because I was not a cool kid. So I just said the Green Day album, and that has carried with me my entire life, and I don't know how to say the word. Oh, really? So you've never said dookie? Because I didn't know what it was. Ah. Okay. I still don't. I still, I'm not even sure what you said. Like, I don't know what it is. Can you say it? Dookie? Is it, do, is it, do, is it dookie? Or is yeah, it, that's yeah, it. That's you, it. Said, you said dookie. It. But see, I'm like, I'm like a Miguel Fuller when it comes to that. Like, I'll be like, oh, okay, I got it. And yeah. next time I'm required to say it, I'll be like, <laughs> what is it? I don't, I'm just not going to say it. I, it's not in my vocabulary. Kind of like the word R U R A L. Rural. Rural? Don't say it. Rural. I'm like, it's out in the sticks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's that. Uh, did you ever watch uh, 30 Rock? There's that whole uh, oh. scene. Wasn't it for like a. The rural chore. The chore? <laughs> I hadn't even seen 30 Rock, but I know about that. That's, that's the me. That's too much. rural chore. Yeah. I can't, I can't say rural. Rural. <laughs> rural. It just comes out like. Rawr. 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 Like what are we what are we doing with these letters? Um, anyway, so that's my fun fact about Dookie. D- I did d- it again. Ah, Dookie. See, I'm not saying it. I can't say it. Okay. D- D- Dookie. It just feels Dookie? like I'm gonna made be made fun of by a bunch of seventh graders. Do you know? Um, and Holly, you know this about me. Uh, forever, I've always confused the saying 
in the actual spelling of this one word. Yes. Um. So whenever I'm reading a book, and they'll be, <laughs> they'll be like, uh, like Tom Brady. He is the example that we go by of a sports figure. Yeah. You yes. Know? Yes. And so the uh, the SAT word that you would use is Tom Brady is the epitome of an athlete. Correct. That's, and you'd be that's like, the word, epitome. Right, epitome. So when I say it out loud, like, how would you spell epitome, Scott? Oh, jeez. No, it's fine. And I'm not, there's no making fun of you because I still mix this a up. Epid. So I'd go A P E, a pid, <laughs> D A. Uh, a, a pid, uh, what is it, epitome? A P E D A M E, epitome. I'm gonna just stop you right there. I'm gonna I'm stop you. Yeah. So it's actually, it starts with the letter E. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. That's not epitome. Yeah. But I don't like it, English. But, the, but E can also be a, uh, like No, uh. no, it's E. Okay, we're gonna go with me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually spelled E P I T O M E. Epitome. Epitome. Oh, yeah. If I, if I see it, I think I'd be able to say but it. But see, Miguel sees it, and what do you think it is when you read it? <laughs> what do you think it is, Miguel? Oh, I love this. I'm not alone. Eptome. Eptome. <laughs> I think Miguel may have said this on the air one day. He was like, you know, it's the eptome, and I can't what? let it go. So no. I was like. Because right, I think I was reading something. because like. Reading. Because when I say it, I'll always say epitome. That's what it was. But then I was reading something and I was like, Tom Brady was the eptome of sports. And Holly was like, what? I was like, I'm sorry. (laughs) I I don't know what you just said. And maybe it's me. What? I don't know what you're saying. What, yeah. what are you saying? Oh, that's funny. Um, that's when we found that out. Yeah. And so even now, still, if I'm reading something, I will always, my the first second, I'll see um, eptome, eptome. And then I'll be like, oh, no, it's epitome. I know oh, that now. Epitome. So it's fine. We all have those Miguel words. also mispronounces the woman's name, Chelsea. Oh, God. Okay. That yeah. was a, that was rough for a while. So I had to learn the hard way that Chelsea, because I used to always say, Chelsea. Oh, dear Lord. And so whenever we would have someone on the phone, I'd be like, hey, Chelsea. And Holly was like, no. I'd be like, Chelsea, Chelsea. And even the Chelsea, Chelsea would be like, yeah, it's just Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea. Yeah. Like the word C, like the ocean. Yeah. Right. But Miguel just saw the A and was like, Chelsea. I don't know why I was like, Chelsea, not yeah. Chelsea. And so even now, I still like if we have a caller and Scott, like I'll look at the call screen board and I'll be like, Chelsea, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea from Lakeland. Uh, you're the 10th caller. You have gotten a lot better of this. Isn't that crazy, Chelsea. though, that our mind still does that? Because that happens to me because I host trivia like every week and there's words that will just always come up. And it's like, I just I'll say it over and over before I go to read it. I'll go to read it out loud. And it's like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Scott, pull up uh, the sidekick on the board. Um, and. Let's see if we can hear this clip that I pulled on, up on my laptop. Hey, I got to miss an hour of rehearsal. So this is uh, when I was talking about from 30 Rock. The rural, the rural juror. <laughs> I, I don't know what clip this is, but hopefully this this will explain what was so funny about it. So today, because I just found out from my publicist, I've been booked on The View. Oh, Jenna, that's great. For the first time in your life, you'll be in a room full of women and you'll be the least crazy one. <laughs> I know. Oh, you know what clip? You should show MTV Darfur. You and Tracy were really funny in that. Oh, this isn't for TGS. It's for my movie. The Rur Juror has a limited release next week. <laughs> oh, congratulations. I didn't know they had a release date for the Rur... for that movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Gotta take this. Hello? You still don't know what the title is? Oh, no one does. It's gone on way too long to ask her about it. This title isn't hard to understand, right? No, it's awesome. I love that we can work while we're on cocaine. What? Could it be roar her gem her? No, that doesn't make any sense. It's got to be oral germ whore. <laughs> okay, but... <bye. laughs> Sorry, that was my publicist. You know, I have to admit, I kind of like that Tracy Jordan is no longer the only movie. So anyway... So the rural juror. The, that's like the only comedy that I've ever actually watched, like, on demand, watch, binge watched it. It is so funny, 30 Rock. I love mm. Tina Fey. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't, if you've never seen it, watch the rural, rural juror. 
roll on a roll. 30 rock. That's a tough one. A wow. Tough one. Um, I really wanted to quickly talk about old friends, okay? All right. Well, Question, yes, though, yes, because yes. you said you were going to bring up something from going downtown in the beginning yes, of this? Yes, and this is what this is. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so I was uh, in the Tampa, Kennedy, Bayshore, not Bayshore, uh, Del Mabry area yesterday for Medi Weight Loss. Startmedi.com slash 115. <laughs> Here we go again. And uh, because when I was up in Atlanta during the holidays, I went and I always, whenever I go home, I always stay one night with my college roommate, Corey. Mm. We went to high school together. We uh, lived together in college for two years. And now she has built this beautiful farmhouse out in the country with her. her um, she ba- built the farmhouse? Oh, yeah. Or her husband did. He literally, not like, oh, we like pay for someone to build it. No, no, he built it with his hands. That's in by amazing. Himself, or did he have a crew of Amish people working no. <laughs> with him? <laughs> That's what you do in Ohio, the Amish. An Am- oh, really? Oh, yeah. no, no. He has good builders. Oh, no, no. He has his own. Well, he works as partners with one of our other high school friends. They own a construction company. And so he would do most of the work um, after they were done building other houses um, and have like, you know, whenever he needed help, he would do it himself. But that's a gorgeous farmhouse. That's bananas. Well, Corey is like this, like Martha Stewart, like woman. I mean, whenever you go to her house, I mean, when I say farmhouse, isn't like, ooh, I bought the farmhouse collection at Target. Like literally it is decked out everything. When you go there, she'll have like, she'll bake cookies and like have them on your pillow on a little plate in the guest room. She'll have like a little carafe of water in there for you. you. so inadequate. I know you. I'm like, literally, I'm always like, well, I suck at life. (laughs) But that's just who she is. But that's because she likes to do it. That's always been her thing. Well, we have a friend that has moved here to Tampa that we went to high school with. And she was like, I made this present for her. Can you take it with you to Tampa when you go back? Mm. Now, mind you, this was the holidays. And today it is January 29th. Yes, Yes. there is. Well, (laughs) last week, Corey texted me and was like, Hey, I never heard from Ansley. Did you ever have a chance to drop off that present? Oh, Miguel. And then there was that, like, do I lie? (sighs) Do I say, yeah, I gave it to her. Maybe she's just, she's busy because she has a newborn. And I was like, no, it's, it literally has been in the closet. I'm sorry. So I had to go give it to her. But then I had this anxiety because I have not seen or talked to Ansley. Mm. Since high school. Well, why? Wait, oh, wow. let's back up before you get into the rest of this. Why did you agree to do this? Why couldn't you just be like, can you just mail it? Well, I mean, why would I say no? I mean, it's like I literally am literally it's five minutes from any weight loss. I mean, there's literally no reason for me to be like, no, I won't say it. would have been more weird if you said no. That's 20 true. bucks. Okay. So okay. I was just like, cool, oh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. But it's just like I said yes, didn't think about it. And yeah. then when I was like, oh, God, I have to go give it to Ansley. Mm-hmm. So then I t- messaged her on Facebook. And I was like, hey, girl, I have a little gift for you. And she goes, oh, hey. So then, like, literally the five minutes that it took yep. me to drive over there, I was like, what do you say? What do you say? What do you talk about? Because, <laughs> like. We were friends in high school. I don't remember, like, people's personality. Like, I remember a little bit of a personality, but I don't remember conversations. I don't remember if we were close. I don't remember what we talked about, what we bonded over. I don't remember anything. And I was, like, having this panic attack driving over her house. And I'm like, what do I, how do, what do I even start this? So, literally, I text her. I was like, hey, I'm here. And, like, she, like, comes out of her beautiful home. And I'm like, hey. And she's like, hey. And then there's that like awkward pause where we're like, ah. Uh? So are how you been, you? girl? So what's been, been going on? How's the past 20 years? Right. And so then it's like we spend a couple of minutes just sort of like the rough overview of where the past 20, 10 years, 15 years of our lives has been and whatnot. And it was fun. And then we, of course, we end with, all right, well, let's get drinks um, soon, girl. Let's like catch up. Cause like I don't I don't remember anything and I'd love to to sort of like reminisce and sort yeah. of remember. But have you ever run into those sort of situations where you run into someone from your past and you don't remember like what your friendship was about and like how you connected that that long time ago? <laughs> Scott, for me, it's every time I go back to Vero. Because the mm. thing about like Vero Beach, where I'm from, is. Anytime you go there, you're going to run into somebody. Mm. Somebody from your past is going to be at either Target, 
maybe the Olive Garden or the beach side if you go out, especially if you go out for drinks because there's only like three bars. Oh. And so I ran into it the last time I was home over like the winter break time. And I saw a ton of people that I went to high school with. And the weird thing now is that we all follow each other on social media. Mm. The hardest thing right now is obviously with our jobs, I post constantly. So I feel like my whole entire life is out there. And it probably is, you, you could pretty much follow my timeline and be like, oh, wow, Scott's in radio, Scott's doing this. And I guess, you know, whatever it looks like. And so people will run into me and be like, oh my gosh, you're doing such cool stuff. I'm like, yeah. And I, I had so many moments where I was like, I literally don't even know what you're doing. I have no mm. idea. Like, honestly, I barely remember your name. And then I'm like, okay, what are you up to? So, you know, the biggest thing like I'm learning is like, I just literally acknowledge like the awkwardness in the situation where I'm like, literally we haven't talked. And so like, what have you been up to? Like, I said, get so tired of talking about me or I'm like, what are you up to? What is, what are you doing right now? Cause for me, the only conversation really is like either, what did you graduate with? Like, what is your starting job right now? Which is cool. And it's an easy thing to kind of transition into who they are. But I'm learning that like so many people have changed from like who I knew them were, like in high school. Like there's people that definitely didn't get on the same terms, maybe a little more douchey. Mm. And now I'm running into them. They're like young adults and they're like super cool. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. You're actually, you're, you're really successful. Nice. <laughs> Good job. But it is awkward. But I have a problem with it because I always in the back of my head, I'm like, I'm never going to talk to you again. Mm. Like, maybe Why does this that is matter good. though? Well, it, it doesn't, but it's more so again, like I, We've I've said it in other podcasts. I have a like a clock in my head that's always like, okay, where is my time navigating? What am I spending my time with? Who am I talking to? And it, maybe it's a problem, but it's also just it's just kind of something I think about in these moments where I could be like, oh my gosh, let's get together when I go back to Vero. But I'm like, no, we're mm. we're not gonna do that. Let me not waste my afternoon like you know trying to find something in common to talk about. But it's usually just that five minutes where I'll just kind of get the whole. Bop, 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 and then I'll get out and never, probably never see him again. I think that's most people, right? Yeah, I Mo guess. Maybe. I don't know, actually. I feel like I'm not like most people, so I don't know. Maybe not. I mean, I guess, but it's just, it's every time I go back home, it's when I have these encounters. And that's why it's, it gives me anxiety anytime I go out. That's one of the reasons is because I, one, I just don't like small talk. I don't want to just step around like, doop -a -doop -a -doop. And, mm. and then the other part, why I don't like it with that short time, I'm never going to see you. It's like, okay, why am I, why are we going to have this conversation? Like, I'm never going to see you again. Mm -hmm. Like, let's I mean, just you wait. You got to do a pleasantry. Like, I at mean, least I a, guess, fi a five minute. Why? Well, what are you just going to be like, hey, bro, and then leave? Bye. Like, that's kind of I don't rude. know, but that's a weird thing, though. It's like, I just, I don't like. So you don't even want to waste five minutes. It's not, well, kind of, because it's like, if we didn't connect before, I think it's more so when people are like, oh my God, we're buddies. And oh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, mm. yo, we haven't talked in no. <laughs> right, how old right. am I? Like, eight years. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think it's cool to sort of check in with people to sort of see, you know, if you knew them. Like, if I had no clue and we never chatted once, then, you know, there's no need for that because you could just yeah. be literally anybody off the street. But if we did have some sort of friendship or relationship or we worked, we were in, yeah. in the same club or something, I would at least like to know you know, what your life has been like and, you know, how have you progressed or... Like, what are you doing for a living? Right, or have you heard any drama about other people <laughs> that we course. went to school with? That yeah, is like, so, uh, There's that's those ones too, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what that. I want to know about. Um, But I remember, like, for my high school, my 10-year high school reunion, it was the weirdest yet validating experience ever. Really? It was because mm. because of the type of high school and middle school I went to, um, you know, I lived on the poor side of town. They lived on the well-to-do side of town. And a lot of my friends, like, think about the houses that you would find in one of the newer subdivisions we have here in Tampa Bay. So think of, like, a in the Bradenton, mm -hmm. you know, out there where they're, like, building it up. Not yeah. um, here in, like, St. Pete proper or, or, like, Tampa or New Tampa, but, like, those newer homes. Or even sometimes, like, the estates that like you Lando see. Like Lando Lakes area? Right, right, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, some of... A lot of my friends grew up like that. Or think about some of the big, big houses on Bayshore. Oh, I'm in yeah. Tampa. Like, my friend that I talked to I had to drop the present off. Like, that's how she grew up. Like, her parents are, like, very well-to-do. Nice. But you would never know it. Like, super cool. I just knew it because we all grew up together. Yeah. Um, But I always felt inadequate. And going to these schools mm. from middle school and high school, being in special ed... I always felt like I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. 
And so that's why I always felt like I had something to prove. That's why I pushed myself to finish college in four years. And I was like, I got to progress in my career. And that's why I work so hard. Yeah. So I remember getting to my 10 year reunion, which I helped organize because okay. overachiever, I was, you know, senior class president. We were doing our show in Panama City. And I was just like so nervous to like see all these people that I hadn't seen mm -hmm. since high school graduation. And as soon as we opened up the doors to this brewery um, in Atlanta, people started coming in. They were like, oh, my gosh, Miguel, how you been? How you been? I was like, OK, it's good. And once we finished checking everyone in and then we started talking to everyone, that's when I everyone was like, oh, my God, like, it's so cool to see the guy that has been talking about radio, TV stuff, doing it. That's cool. Because remember, I was on our middle school little radio station. Like yes. back in the day when we would just read the lunch menus and like the signal went a mile around the school and I stuttered through my announcements. I've always been that kid, the high mm, school radio station. Cool. And so they were like, this is the coolest thing to see that you have always had this dream and now you're actually doing it. Yes. And so uh. then this is what really just threw me for a loop when I was there is I was talked to like two or three different people. And I was like, hey, how's it going? They were like, not about me. Like, I listen to your show. I stream you. Wow. It is so cool. And these are people that I literally had no clue. No clue they listen to our show back in Panama City. And I was just, boom, shocked. And then whenever I would try to, like, turn the conversation, because then it gets to that awkward part where I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. Well, thank you. Like, enough about me. So yeah. what about your life? Yeah. And then, like, the guy, one guy was like, I'm the produce manager at Publix. I've got nothing exciting going on in my life. So have you met any celebrities ah, or, like, what? And I was like, I need that produce, though. <laughs> I love your banana peppers. Oh, my God. <laughs> but that's one of those moments where I realized that I had been limiting myself. Mm. Like, since high school, middle school, I always thought I wasn't this, I wasn't that's that. That's it, yeah. yeah. None of those kids thought that. That's, okay. That I, I wrote that down because I think that's, that's the problem I have is, you know, I wrote down like for everything I just stated about having a problem, like just wasting time. I want to take that back for a second. I think the trigger with that is because I remember there was like there were certain people that just like wouldn't bother with me or like, mm. you know, I wasn't like in the like exactly the coolest. Group. I just kind of floated around group to group, whatever. And I think that's what it is, because now it's like people will hit me up and like think, you know, I do like the coolest thing ever. I'm like, wait, but now, now you think what happened back then? Like, you didn't bother with me then. Mm. And now, you know, whether it's, there's people in college too that it's like, they're like, oh, can I get some tickets to the concert? I'm like, yeah, that, that's, mm. now you see, now you want to know, that's I think where I'm like, that will be probably one of my, you know, once I sign up for therapy and like working through that, like that was right. one of the things where it's like, you know, back then, and even to this day, like, I don't really feel like that cool guy. I don't feel like that's not who I am. I'm just me. But, I think there's a, those people that, you know, back then it would have been awesome to be friends with you, but you didn't give a dang about me. Right. And now you want to give a dang about me. I think that's a weird thing. And I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Do you, do you grow past that? I, I think obviously Why do you, you have do. to? That, no, but I think that for me, like, that's, um, that's like, I'm not, why would I waste my time? Right. I mean, to me, I think there's a difference in reconnecting with someone that you maybe were friends with or had a class or in the same club with. And, you know, you're having a conversation and catching up. But if someone that was mean to you or just blew you off in yeah. high school right. and now they're trying to reconnect <laughs> because they think that they can get something from uh, you yeah. or like they're clout chasers. Right. Then like, girl, bye. I have no time for that in my life. Yeah. Absolutely not. No, no. And I've experienced that not from that end, um, but like from a dating, like people I have dated in the past or I tried to date mm. that I at least tried to talk to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or and, you know, and I never want to like say, oh, you know, bleep you because you rejected me <laughs> because no. you know what? You didn't like me. That's fine. Yeah, like yeah. if you did it in a, if, if you <laughs> let me down in a humane way that's and nice. like, <laughs> you know, exactly. You did it with velvet gloves and that's fine. But for people that were just rude yeah. or blew me off with like no explanation. Yeah. And then they're like, Hey, so I know it's been a minute, but do you happen to have tickets to Selena Gomez? Bitch, fuck off. Ah! I want nothing to I mean, do with you. That's okay? common. That's that's common. No, so okay. absolutely. If they blew you off back then, okay, you don't need to entertain them now. Uh, right? Okay, that's what I was feeling. Yeah, Got absolutely. It. No, no, no. But I do think that everybody has a moment um, where you realize that 
you thought you had a different thought of what people thought about you back then. And yes. that's what my high school reunion was for me, thinking that like I wasn't um, liked or everyone thought that I was just annoying because I was on student council yeah. and on the yearbook and video yearbook and chorus and drama club and student council. And everyone was like, oh, my God, you were like popular. And you were like, and I was like, no, I wasn't. Exactly. Well, like, I had ah. a, a one small moment. I have remind me to talk about like not me not recognizing people. Remind me that, that that's coming in a minute. But like I had this conversation and I don't remember why we talked about this. But like this uh, kid that I went to school with, Tim, um, and I was good friends with like his neighbor. So he was like always in the group of like me um, in like elementary and middle school. Mm -hmm. So I knew of him. We were not friends in high school necessarily, but we over Facebook discovered some common thing. And so we ended up messaging. It was probably about how one of our other classmates was this dumb bitch trying to sell us <laughs> uh, py pyramid scheme things. Oh. And he was like, she didn't change. And I'm like, nope, need mm. to remind myself about that. Right. Um, and I was like, you know, I, I don't remember why I let my guard down, but I was like, I just feel like for a long time, my driving force to get where I'm at was to prove them wrong. Uh, like to prove yeah. the the what I considered most people in my high school who thought I was a huge loser wrong. Right. right. And he was like, I thought you had a lot of friends and you were really popular. And I was like, <sighs> isn't it crazy how we I was like, no, I mean, I mm. had friends. Yeah. Right. But right. we were most certainly not popular. <laughs> we were, I had like a couple of different groups. Like I had my show choir friends. Mm hmm I have my band friends. Hey. I have my musical friends. Those are not like popular things. Right. And like there was always, you knew who the popular in crowd group was. I was not part of that whole thing. And so I was like, no, nah, that's weird. He's like, oh, that's so weird. It's it's weird how we think about of each other yes. and mm -hmm. everything in high school. Yes. So that was like an eye opener for me um, because I, I felt a lot of like the need to prove myself because I was just, so especially in band, like, right? The older, attractive boys in the band would like make fun of me, mm. and I'd be like, okay, "What? I can't even." Fine. Even the band boys don't like me. Whatever. Mm. Um. <sighs> so that was like a whole thing. Switching gears really quick. This I was gonna. Um, I noted it for talking about it after you two kind of talked through that, which I think was fantastic uh, knowledge about yourself. My problem is with like those type of people. I don't recognize them. Mm. I don't recognize anybody and I don't right. know like and I'm starting to wonder if it's like do I have that weird thing where I don't recognize faces that's how serious it is whoa like people we meet in in the radio world or you in the MH fam like there are some obviously that I know because we interact with people like on the daily basis so we have like a group of MH fam members that I know I would recognize if I ran into them at Publix I would know it but that's the minority the majority of listeners, even if I've met you previously, I will not recognize you. Right. I, it's like any interaction will completely leave my brain. And it's not just MNH fan members, like the radio listeners. It's also people that I've met through Miguel or my other friends, like, like acquaintances, like people mm -hmm. that I may have met once or twice that we've had interactions, maybe even a short five minute conversation and if I see them outside of the context in which they were, I don't even recognize them. And it's embarrassing. And it makes me feel like crap because I'm like, I don't know if they think like, oh, she's too good to remember me. I'm like, no, I just, it's like, I don't have enough room in my brain for enough stuff. And I just forget it. And case in point, there is a guy that is friends with my ex-husband and they've been friends since like we got divorced. Mm. And um, <clears throat> my ex-husband is, friends with him and his fiance and has been for years. Mm -hmm. And like, he's really nice to Maya. I ran into him at a bar in Dunedin in December mm. and he came over to me and like, was like, Maya says hi in the middle of this bar. And I had had a couple of drinks. So I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about my daughter? Like, who uh... are you? And he was like, oh, I was just on the phone with Chris and we were just FaceTiming. And I was like, <laughs> nice to meet you, by the way, I'm Holly. And he like took my hand and shook it and then just was like, Okay, and walked away. It wasn't until the next day oh, no. that I realized it's that guy that oh. I've met multiple times, have met his now fiance, talks to Maya. Uh, In that moment, I was yeah. like, I've never seen this man before. Oh. It's Tyler. 
And so then I, think I don't I know. know who Tyler is. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had to like go through this shame of like I introduced myself to him because like what yeah. I, I was trying to do in the moment what I thought would be appropriate, it's a nice which is thing introduce to introduce myself, right. but it was absolutely inappropriate. So then I had to text Chris and I was like, "Can you apologize to Tyler for me?" Oh. Yeah, and it wasn't a, like a great situation either, especially so, if you had drinks here in a random a and your guard bar. was up. I know. It's like, Wait, that, who are you? It's because he was like, "Maya says hi," and I'm like, who "Why are you talking my daughter? Are you?" But like, it's that serious yeah. because I had met this man on more than one occasion <laughs> and we've had conversations yeah. and I did not recognize his face. I think that happens. I think that's fair. And especially dealing with adults, it's just that there is only so many things that our minds can can take in. And it's just it's I guess it's just it's embarrassing because you and I, I don't want it to seem like I'm better than you. But like, for example, like if remember before the pandemic, we used to go out to Franklin Manor. Right. Oh, yeah. And people would come up and we'd obviously met them before. Mm -hmm. I'd have to like stand by Miguel and be like, help me here. Because Miguel has a really good memory, especially with faces. And I wouldn't know if I'd met those people or not. Right. Especially if the outfit was different. Well, girl, you did your hair different. (laughs) You might as well be a completely separate individual. And it's embarrassing. Well, see, everybody has a different strength when it comes to memory. Like, I remember faces really well. And so I can always be like, oh, my God, girl, last time you were here, you just got a promotion for your job. How you doing? And I'm like, yes. Oh, that's right. But here's the thing. I will never remember your name. I'm horrible with names. Whereas my fiance, Abe, he remembers everyone's name. Like literally one time you we can meet someone somewhere. That's awesome. At a club. We're drunk. Like, what is he, a magician? Literally. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And now like that's who I lean on for those, especially in like our friendship world. Mm-hmm. We'll be out and then someone and we'll see him the next week. And I'll be like, hey, you. And Abe's like, Hello, Jose. <laughs> You're like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yes, Jose. Jose. How are you? That's what happens with some of your gays. Oh, because yeah. You roll deep. And I know, <laughs> obviously, I'm friends with the core. Like, right. I got my core gay group down. Right. Like, those are the people that if we still got together, I would see them on the weekend or whatever. Right. But there's, like, a lot of gays in your group that are, like, second tier like ah, yeah, the like, come around sometimes. Not every yes. time, sometimes. Right. But they obviously know me. Right. There's one me, and <laughs> in, in my mind, I'm like, oh, God, which one are you? God, no. <laughs> I would just rather just not see anybody and just be like, please don't let me not embarrass myself. Please, like, I'm so sorry. I think next time we'll just have name tags for everybody. That'd be great if everyone yes. always had a name tag. <laughs> I know, but then I could be like, oh, hello, Nick. So tell me about yourself. You're like, Holly, remember we went to see Ellie Golding together? And I'll be like, yes. No, well, see, this I don't. Is, this is why I never, ever, ever, ever say it's nice to meet you unless they yes. say it first. Yep, yep, yep. I always say it's nice to see you. Mm. I never I started anymore. doing that after a while. I always just yeah. say, how are you? <laughs> just right. skip past the introduction. I'm hey. always like, oh my gosh, it was so nice to see you. Yeah. I never say it was nice to meet you yeah. because I will, because literally what uh, during Christmas break, um, Abe and I were out and I'd had a lot of drinks and oh. this guy came up to me and was like, Miguel, how you been? And I was like, who <laughs> is this ah. but i could tell by the way he greeted me that we had Man. talked or we knew each other and the whole time i was like who the fuck is this, I have no clue. <laughs> this we had me. a 10 minute conversation that's me every time was, i'm really good at having the conversation that makes you think i know who you are right i was just like oh my god what's been going on how were the holidays i know it's been such a rough year mm-hmm. and i just keep asking yes. very general questions yeah i'm not like making references to your family or to who you could or could not be dating no i don't know no So that's why, and then, like, literally, I had a friend of mine who I know this guy through. He was like, hey, so you saw my friend James out this weekend? And I was like, I had no clue who he was. It wasn't until the next day that I remember. And he was like, you did a good job. Because he was like, I ran into Miguel, and he was just so nice. I could tell he had some drinks. And I was like, bitch, that's magic, okay? (laughs) That takes practice to be able to do that. It really does. And if it happens to you, don't think that it's like, I'm trying to scam you. Just know that I've had years of practice acting like I know who you are. Right. And then hopefully it'll At just... At some point, hopefully it matches. Hopefully it clicks, yeah. Oh my God, this hat... I'll wrap it up after this, but we were at the... Um, this was last year before the pandemic hit. It was like one of, probably one of the last things we did. We went to the Bush Gardens Food and Wine Fest mm. or some type of thing like that where it was dark. 
So it was an evening thing, and you mm-hmm. got your little punch card, and I'm walking around. And this guy, I was in line to get some of the food, was like, oh, my God, Holly, how are you and Miguel? And I was, uh, I turned around, and I was like, hi, oh, my God. And he was like, I can't believe it's been so long. And I'm like, oh, crap. You are not kidding. Like, how, how about this, though? This is great, right? And so then we like jump, and he's like, but no, seriously, like, how are you and Miguel doing? I see, you know, you guys are amazing. We like, I, I keep an eye on you. Keep in mind, no, no recollection. <laughs> None. Face, name. He introduced me to his wa- girlfriend. Oh, I'm like, oh my God, so good to see you. So uh, that was, I was just like, well, who, please help me, God. So we're talking, we're talking. The line is moving up. And finally, as I'm keeping this fake conversation going, oh. and he's just enjoying it because I'm filling him in on what Miguel and I are doing. Mm-hmm. So we finally get up to like the food place. And and he mentioned, and he was like, well, you know, it was just so great when you were in that building. And I was like, it was like a lightning bolt. Oh. Went through my head, went out the side of my body. And I was like, <laughs> I know who this is. It was like in the last three seconds. And it sucks because you want to greet them now like you know right. them. You're like, yes. oh, hey, bitch, how you doing? <laughs> I know who you are now. He, he's the program director and used to be uh, on air on a radio station at um, one of our sister, and not sister, at one of our competing radio companies mm-hmm. where Miguel and I used to work like a decade ago. Oh, yes. gosh. And I remembered in the last second. And in that last second, I was so like, I want to say hi for real. And I was like, oh. Anyway, tell everybody else we said hi. But then, then like, don't you feel like you sort of overcompensate to, like, give extra... Like, oh, my God, that one time I walked in your office and I sat down and you yes. consoled me. Oh, my God. Yes, exactly. And I was just like, I hope to God he doesn't think or realize that I just figured out who he was. Like, it was a game of fucking Clue until the last second. And I was just like, finally, I just been having this casual conversation. And the last second, I was like, ta I got it. The memory is an amazing thing. It is an amazing thing. Oh God, that was oh, that was slightly mortifying. <laughs> but at the, I'm I was glad I nailed it at the very end. And You're like, I got it. I dismounted properly. Yes, Thank I you. did. I stuck the landing. <laughs> yes. At, at then there's that. So that's the crap that happens to me. Just I love FYI. It. All right, Scott. What's your social media? At Scott Tavlin, S C O T T T A V L I N. Holly. Radio Holly on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Mine is Miguel Fuller, M I G U E L F U L L E R. Thank you for being in the Platypus Posse. Yep. If you want some Miguel and Holly stickers, you can always just shoot me an email with your name and address. Miguel at hot1015tampabay.com. And don't forget to please leave us a rating and a review and Share the podcast with a friend. If you have a friend that's like, I've been looking to get into podcasts, but I don't know what to listen to. This one. Tell them what's the Miguel and Holly Uncensored. You can listen on iTunes, the Hot 1015 app, on Spotify, everywhere you can, even on the iHeartRadio app. So take a listen and rate us. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Catch up, catch, up, catch up with the previous episodes of the Miguel and Holly Uncensored Podcast from Hot 101.5. Just hit up the Hot 101.5 app, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Search Miguel and Holly Uncensored. Uncensored.